text to video, you actually, um, the big one, right, the big two right now that are fighting each other are Runway and Pika Labs. Those are the two big most used like text to video hmm. companies. And Pika Labs just released a thing where you can not only generate video, but you can highlight a section of a real video. Like they changed a lady's top. Like she was wow. wearing this tube top thing and they changed it into something else as the video is running. Or they put glasses on a monkey as it's moving around and it looked really good. And so. That stuff's moving so fast, and Pika Labs raised like forty million dollars for its next round, uh, and you can't even get in it. Like they're giving beta to that, and then text to three D is also crazy. And then there are a lot of uh, companies like Adobe, mm-hmm. where like that Trash Panda there on the table, you could just take a picture of the front of it, and it will guess what it looks like, and probably make a pretty good rendition of that trash panda off of a picture. You don't need to even 3D scan the thing. Wow. And um, Now, some of that, it goes into its database looking for what it thinks is a trash panda to get different modeling ideas? That, you you broadly have to think about, well, figurines are usually only a certain depth that's kind of got the same look of a figurine. You know, it's human-shaped, so it's going to be kind of oval. And there's all this math that we don't think about as just common amongst all types of objects. Whereas if it looks at like a bottle or uh, a cup, it knows that those are more like circular. And so it's going to make it uh, a more circular as opposed to like an oval shape uh, around the torso. And yeah, it's just following those patterns. So before we know it, you'll be able to just do, because you said the image to 3D or text to 3D. Sorry, let me go back to it. Yeah, text to 3D. It, we're not really quite the text to 3D is still kind of hard, but there's a lot of image to 3D. Your text to 3D gets kind of wild results, but and what the implications of that is people will be able to build 3D models and even worlds one day just by kind of like typing up what they want and sticking it in the system. Uh, Epic, who uh, runs the uh, Fortnite and Unreal Engine a couple years ago, they acquired a uh, company that's been scanning all the world's objects so there's this Mm. database that you can pull in a barrel and just stick it in the unreal engine and it's free and so they have all that data too that they could are likely training on um new barrel old barrel brown barrel black barrel all that kind of stuff yeah it's insane i guess they can do that too they're, they're going around and scanning high uh like 4k resolution of objects throughout the entire world Mm. and Today you can start dropping this stuff in, and that's pre-built stuff. They have we don't. There's no rumor of them training an AI, but it's very likely that Epic is dumping this stuff into a large language based model that also can make 3D stuff. That you know, one day in Fortnite you'll just type up, "I want to make a Fortnite game that has you know a warehouse yeah. and." then it knows, well, warehouses have barrels, and we have scans of barrels, and it'll make a... It's a new warehouse, so we'll use the new warehouse barrel and make all these assumptions just from... So could you... Is the future such that, like, a Hollywood movie, it's all in green screen, and everything is just digitally added? I think if we're at the point... entire set? ...that an entire movie can be done by AI... Well, the actors... Let's just say the actors are still human. Yeah. Of course, they could be AI-generated. And everything is digitally just, like you said, oh, different top. Uh, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that. I'm going to add the sky. I'm going to add an airplane just well, as if it was real. The The Mandalorian, uh, and if you've seen like the bat behind the scenes of how they were doing that screen. <coughs> uh, okay, so definitely check that out. If uh, some of our nerdier audience who loves Star Wars has probably already seen this, they had a big wraparound screen. And all the sets of the Mad- Mandalorian were actually this game engine where they could shoot on set this alien background, and it, they're shooting just live video. Wow. And then the camera tracks where, the background tracks where the camera is. So the clouds and the, and the landscape moved appropriately, and it's all being rendered in real time. Wow. And one day, yeah, they're, you know, they'll either be adding stuff in, but like 
they said uh, there was one day where uh, the background didn't look good or a cloud was in a weird spot. So they go in the game engine, move the cloud, reshoot. Whereas right now, Hollywood kind of looks at as we'll just shoot stuff in green screen and dump all of that responsibility onto the CGI team later. There's definitely going to be interesting technologies that come into the entertainment space because that's where generative AI uh, is going to have the highest impact is like, mm. where's the use for entertainment value? 